All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rochak, Wadash. Dope honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone and salutation and much love to you. I come out there pushing out this word <clears throat> in truth and sincerity. And uh, just want to do a quick video, Lord, as well as edifying and to the hopeful elect out there. You know, going into the prophecy of, of Israel being um, made clean again, all right? The Lord uh, turning back unto us and, and him being our, our power and us being his people, all right? And it all begins with the elect, okay? The, the elect are going to be the ones that that uh, first and foremost return unto the Lord and seek after him, okay? But then ultimately, after two-thirds are destroyed, all right, the nation, all the nation is going to be brought back to the Lord, all right? See, and that's the thing that our people don't understand. You you, you don't want to get with the program down right now. You you gonna get you gonna have to get with it anyway. All right. <clears throat> There's no options here. The only option is, I mean, the only choices really you got is you, you either gonna die and come back to the Lord or come back to the Lord willingly right now. And and then even go in deeper. It's the those men beginning with the 144,000 and the women and children. And, and, and the other men, you know, that friends of the prophet and so on, they are, have already been chosen before the foundations of the earth was even made. So, you know, ultimately all Israel will be saved as the scriptures say. But we'll go ahead and start here in uh, Psalms 51. It says, uh, I'll start at, uh, I'll start at one. It says, have mercy upon me, O Most High, according to thy loving kindness. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. See, and that's what the elect is coming back to the Lord and, and, and uh, you know, asking the Lord to do so, you know, uh, to forgive us for our sins and, and our iniquities, you know, and our transgressions. Verse 2 says, Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. And how are we being washed and cleansed through this word? All right, the washing of the word. Okay. It says, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only have I sinned. All right? So we acknowledge our transgressions before you. How about you, Shai? We're confessing our faults. All right? And that's what's going to separate the elect from the rest of the nation of Israel. They're not going to confess their sins. They're not going to, you know, accept that what they're doing is, is going to hell off, man. But ultimately, they will come back and and, and acknowledge, you know, how Bashim Al Shai is their power. All right, but that's why the scriptures say they shall know it by death, through uh, through death by pain, man. So it's gonna be a, a gruesome way to find out, come back to reality. Okay, it says against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaping in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. All right? You know, so the, ultimately the Lord is, is revealing the mysteries unto his servants, all right? And putting it in our inward parts, giving it in, in our hearts, you know, meaning your mind. The Lord is bringing it, bringing back the uh, the remembrance of of who we are, of who our power is. Okay, and uh, beginning with the elect, all right, and then ultimately, you know, the Lord is just gonna install, you know, the law, statutes, commandments in our in, in our inward parts as well, and all of Israel is gonna be perfect. Um, oh, where was I? Seven, verse seven. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Right. And that's what we are beseeching the Lord for, to blot out our iniquities. You know, don't hold us accountable for the uh, uh, our ignorance, you know, our sin when we were in ignorance, you know. And even now, you know, we, we unwillingly sin, you know, when we wear wearing clothes, mixed fabrics, you know, and so on and so forth. You know, think some things are just out of our control that because we're in captivity, you know, and we're you know we're in the uh, uh, you know the the worst case scenario ever seen on this face of the earth, man. But the Lord is is blotting that out. He's not holding that against us. 
that's why Yahweh Shai ultimately died for us. Um, verse 10, create in me a, a clean heart, O Most High, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not the Holy Spirit from me. Right, and that's a prayer you should say every day, you know. But, you know, that's what the point was, you know, that that uh, that clean heart that the Lord is going to give us. You know, and, and, and it's beginning with the elect. You see a transformation in the in, in the elect, okay? And this is before the Lord actually even does it to the whole nation of Israel. You know, this is you're seeing faith on earth, in 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 in, in sin, sinful mortal flesh, okay? But what is so that we can understand? So when we get that immortal flesh, all right, the uncorruptible flesh. That we appreciated that much more, you know. And also, again, ultimately, it's going to be for the whole nation of Israel. So let's go to Micah chapter seven. Uh, Micah seven and eighteen. This is Micah seven and eighteen says, "Who is a power like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity? And whose iniquities he pardoneth? Ultimately, to all the nation of Israel, okay? Because he's going to give us everlasting life." You know, he's going to give us an eternal kingdom. But again, it begins with the elect. Because the elect is going to be the ones to, to make it on this side and receive salvation. It says, um, pardoneth iniquity and passes by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. Right? The, the remnant. The Lord's always dealing with a remnant. All right? He's always, there was, you read throughout the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, the Lord was always dealing with a remnant. All right? He was never dealing with the whole nation as he dealt with with the remnant, okay. Uh, that's why the scriptures say in Galatians, uh, "Not all Israel is of Israel." Um, he retaineth not his anger forever, because he delighteth in his mercy. So, hey, as great as his wrath is, is as great as his mercy is, man. And he delighteth. Scripture said he delighteth in his mercy, man. So it's a, it's pleasing. It's it's, it's uh, was well, yeah, it's pleasing unto him to give us this kingdom, man. Okay. Um. Verse 19, he will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities and thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. There you go, man. So all, you know, the Lord's not going to remember our sins no more. All right. Even believe it or not, even the two thirds, the ones that are going to die on the side, the ones that don't want to bow, you know, and, and serve you. How about Shai? Ultimately, they're going to be forgiven, you know, and, and be able to partake in the kingdom of heaven with us. Not on the level, the same level, of course, of the elect, but they they will ultimately be saved. You know, you know, in this in the, in the sense of, you know, living a righteous life. Okay, that's that's this blessing in itself, man. Have being a perfect uh, a person, you know, and that's that's going to come way uh, via the way of the new covenant. Okay, uh, verse twenty, thou wilt perform the truth to Jacob and the mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto the fathers. In the days of old, right? So <clears throat> these things, this is prophecy, baby, because it hasn't happened yet, and we're telling you it's gonna happen. The Lord said it's gonna happen. Okay. This is Ezekiel chapter 39 and verse 25. Ezekiel 39, verse 25 says, Therefore, thus say the Lord Yahweh by Shimia Shai, now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob. And have, yeah, keep reading. And have mercy upon the whole house of Israel, and will be jealous for my holy name. So again, the Lord's gonna. It said, uh, He gonna have mercy upon the whole, um, the whole house of Israel. All right, and it, again, this is gonna be done via the new covenant. All right, which we're gonna get into, which is only for Israel. Okay, verse twenty six, and they. That have borne their shame and all their trespasses, whereby they have trespassed against me when they dwelt safely in the land, and, and none made them afraid. When I have brought them again from the people and gathered them out of their enemies' lands, and then sanctified in them in the sight of many nations, then shall they know that I am Yahweh their power. Right, because so the Lord is going to deliver us from all the lands of our enemies, which we are currently in. Okay, mainly here in the land of the north, but we are, we are scattered all around the nations. Okay, so the Lord is going to bring us from that, and then then shall it be known that He's our power again. 
All right? And then we uh, we going to uh, uh, our people finally going to know that that we're his people. It says, but I have gathered them. So lucky. Let me go. Verse 28 says, then shall they know that I am the Lord or Yahweh, the power which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. All right. Because the Lord for our punishment. All right. Not so that we could be destroyed, but but so that we would learn a lesson. OK, the Lord's not doing this just for shits and giggles. All right. Um. Uh, let me see here if I can find some. Okay, this is Baruch, real quick. Baruch 4 and 6. You were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because you moved the Most High to wrath, you were delivered unto the enemies. Right, so it's not for destruction that the Lord brought us into the, to the uh, enemy's hands and scattered us. It was because we moved the Lord to wrath by disobeying him. So when you happen, what happens when you disobey your father? He chastises you because he loves you. If he doesn't chastise you, it's because he don't love you. So this is the, you know, this has been the chastisement of, 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 of existence since Israel was a nation, man. And we would continue to break his laws. He would chastise us. Then we'd get right for a little bit. Then do it again and again and again. And now this is going to be the last ass whooping at the time of Jacob's trouble. So back in uh, Ezekiel 39, verse 28. Then shall they know that I am Yahweh their power which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. But I have gathered them unto their own land and have left none of them any more there. Neither will I hide my face any more from them. For I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, saith Yahweh Bashem Yahshai. So hey, call Yahweh Bashem Yahshai, man. The Lord is no longer going to hide his face from us, man. You know, he's not going to he's not gonna uh, 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 turn a blind eye, so to say, you know, for the things that have been done unto us, man. Now he's going to come and, and, de and defend us. No longer going to let us be uh, 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 sold into the nations and, and dragged through the mud, so to say. And then when he does all that and saves us and brings us back into the own, our land, you know, then that, you know, we're going to have those new bodies and we're going to have those new minds, man, the new heart, a clean heart. All right. We're an uncorruptible mentality. All right, so we'll go to uh, Hebrews. This is Hebrews 8, and uh, let's just get straight to the point. Uh, start at 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place. This is Hebrew, again, this is Hebrews 8 and 7. For if the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, all right, our people. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And that's it. No other nations are part of this covenant. Never were, never will be. Okay. Not according, verse 9, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not in my covenant. And I regard them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. What days, man? The time of Jacob's trouble, when, when the Lord brings salvation and it brings destruction, all right? The mark of the beast is right around the corner, man. Destruction and salvation ain't too far uh, um, after that, okay? So after those days, right, it says, uh, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, showing you that we haven't entered into the new covenant fully yet, all right? When we get those new bodies and those new hearts, then... That's when the new covenant is fully intact and, and you know intact, so to say. It says, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a power, and they shall be to me a people. There you go, man. So hey, God like Yabashimashai. All our people are gonna be righteous, man. Perfect people. Imagine that. The, yeah, the same nigga you see on the corner smoking crack and selling drugs and gang banging, doing this and though our people are gonna be righteous, man. It's a far-fetched idea for the world to believe, but it's going it's to happen. Thus saith the Lord. Verse 11, And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Right? So we're not going to have to teach our people. All right? We're not going to have to explain, go expound on the, on the, on the, on the law to them. Because they just it's going to be in them. It's, they're going to they're gonna be born perfect. Okay? So that's something, that's something to uh, you know, motivate you to keep pushing for, the, you know, and endure to the end. So with that, Lord's willingness was edifying. So next time I say shalom.